It was good. It was good. God was satisfied. But this is the first time that the Bible says that something is not good. Adam was lonely. And so God provided a helper. And the, the word says helper. In some uh, translation, it's a helpmate. Okay? To us Filipinos, a helper is not good word to describe your wife. <laughs> uh, and sometimes we think a helper is somebody katulong. No? No? Somebody who serves. But that's not the intention and that's not the meaning of helper hit. The helper that was used here means someone who assists another to reach fulfillment. It is used somewhere else in the Old Testament when referring to someone coming to rescue another. In other words, Eve, the woman, came to rescue Adam from his loneliness. And the word says, comparable to him. This is not good that man should be alone. God made woman who will be comparable to him. It could also be translated suitable to him. Or more literally, corresponding to him. In other words, Eve, the woman, will provide what was missing in Adam's life. Those of you who are husbands here, your woman, your wife, would provide what was missing in your life. What is missing in your life. And that is why somebody has said, a commentator, Matthew Henry said, Eve was made by God not out of Adam's head so that she can rule over him, nor out of his feet so that he can trample, or so that she can trample upon him, but out of his side to be his equal, under his arm to be protected by him, and near his heart to be loved by him. <laughs> What a beautiful illustration of the relationship of husband and wife. And so if we read on with regards to the teaching of marriage, we'll find this, this verse in verse 24. It says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. You know what? I can firmly say that in many marriages, this has not really taken part as it should. And that has resulted to the problems in marriage that then follow. And so let me share with you this basic and fundamental teaching of marriage in the Bible. First, marriage is for companionship. Second, marriage, biblical marriage, involves leaving. That's the word that was used, leaving. Leaving means to give another, to give other relationships a lesser degree of importance. And according to this verse, the closest relationship outside marriage is specified here that of the relationship of a son or a daughter to their parents therefore a man shall leave his father and mother it is necessary to leave behind your father and mother when you get married and you know all the trouble that comes when they are still with you and I see some smiles. 
But that does not mean that you will no longer honor and respect or love your parents. It simply means that now that you are married, you now have a more intimate, more foremost relationship over and above your relationship with your parents. That's what the verse is telling. And if this is true, then certainly all lesser ties must either be broken or changed or left behind. And that's the reason why many, they don't want to get married because they don't want to leave their other relationships. Let's just be, you know, steady and good friends because I don't want to leave my other relationships. But you see in the, in, uh, in the teaching in the Bible, especially in 1 Corinthians, I mean, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. It tells us that husbands, to dwell with your wives according to understanding, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, lest your prayers be hindered. And that's a very interesting passage. God was, God was actually saying that if, if you fail as husband and wife to dwell together with each other in knowledge as husband and wife, forsaking all others relationship, it says then your prayers will be hindered. your prayers will not be answered. You see, your, your relationship with your spouse is directly connected to answered prayers. This is what First Peter is saying. Your prayer life will be ineffective if you fail to have this foundation together in your life. Some of you may say, oh, I don't, have this, I don't have this problem. I dwell with my wife. That means we live in the same house. Isn't that good enough? Well, to dwell means to be aligned to something. To be aligned with your wife. Peter says to give, give honor to her. And that word honor means to give maintenance to. It's like a car. Eh? Keep using your car, and you don't care about maintenance, the car will break down. Hmm? Amen. Amen. <laughs> and that's the reason that you break down in marriage. Because you as husband and wife should give maintenance to each other. That means if there is a problem, you know right away to, to, to pay attention to that problem in terms of your relationship. And, and I'm talking about uh, cultivating the marriage relationship, not just putting it on the side, not just putting it in the background, but make it the main thing in your life. Your marriage is important. Do all you can to keep it strong. Do all you can to keep the romance alive. Keep those fire burning at home. And sometimes when we get when we are new, newly married, we are so excited about each other, husband and wife. But as times, go, as times go on, it is a usual tendency that, you know, our, even our love 
uh, our patience, our kindness, our good manners, as well as romance, they all deteriorate. Nababawasan. You are smiling and you know what I'm talking about. When you first courted your wife, you were so romantic and so nice to her. And you treated her so, so well. You treated her like a queen. That was before. Now, no more. Okay. You always, before, you always give her a bunch of flowers every week. Now, no more. Only sometimes, only when you happen to pass by the cemetery. <laughs> you grab the flowers with them. Here, darling. <laughs> Before, you're always there to help and serve her. Oh, let me open the car door for you and you, you uh, hold her hands and help her go in. Uh, but now no more uh, you not only open the car door for her you start driving even before she is all the way in <laughs> <laughs> hurry up <laughs> uh, you wives you always before you uh, at early part of it, you always write you know love letters and sweet notes to your husband you always uh, uh, write these wonderful, sweet nothings to your husband. Now you still write those notes, but they're, they're no longer love notes. They're all to-do lists. <laughs> or, or to buy lists, things to buy. <coughs> what I'm saying is that that we tend to lose those basic kindness and romances that we used to have when we were newly married. And furthermore, cultivating marriage requires communication. Communication is important. One of the most important elements in any successful marriage is communication. That means you talk and share. Hmm? Uh, you know, I've heard, and I know if this is accurate, but according to experts, they say that a woman speaks of an average of 50,000 words a day. And a man speaks 25,000 words a day which is half of the woman. <laughs> and maybe the husband spent all day in work, doing things, talking to people, and he has already used up most of his words. And then he comes home, and you wonder why he does not talk to you. Or oh, he has a few words. But communication is important. Again, going back to God's original intent, you are united with her or with him in thoughts, goals, plans, and efforts. And this takes a lot of communication between the two of you. So biblical marriage involves leaving. All other relationships becomes less important. But other activities outside marriage shall have less priority. Did you hear that? Other activities, activities outside marriage should have less priority. That means your business, your career, your house, your hobbies, interests, and even church work should come after your relationship with your spouse. Now listen to this. Your marriage 
is more important than your career. Your marriage is more important than your house. Your marriage is more important than your hobby or your interests. And those of you who are involved in the church, your marriage is, in, is more important than your ministry. Did you hear me say that? Those of you who are involved in the ministry of our church, your marriage is more important than your ministry. Listen, you don't have a ministry if your marriage is not together. Because your house needs to be in order. For the scripture says, how can you rule the house of God if you can't even do it or put an order in your own house? But we always lose sight of this priority today. We think that our career is more important. We think that our hobbies are more important. We think that some other things are more important. And we put our marriage and our families on the side, where it should be the most important thing in our lives. 